And this was a uh, very difficult week, if you will, for Ambassador Susan Rice. She was under constant attack uh, by various Republican senators, especially Lindsey Graham of South Carolina and John McCain of Arizona. Check this out. And the reason I don't trust her is because I think she knew better. I don't think she deserves to be promoted. We will do whatever's necessary to block the nomination uh, that's within our power as far as Susan Rice is concerned. I don't think we're doing very well in the U.N., quite frankly. Her boss, President Barack Obama, held a news conference, and he wasn't pleased with the attacks on his ambassador. Uh, but let me say specifically about Susan Rice. She has done exemplary work. She has represented the United States and our interests in the uh, United Nations with skill and professionalism and toughness and grace. As I've said before, she made an appearance at the request of the White House, in which she gave her best understanding of the intelligence that had been provided to her. If Senator McCain and Senator Graham and others want to go after somebody, they should go after me. And I'm happy to have that discussion with them. But for them to go after the U.N. ambassador, who had nothing to do with Benghazi, and was simply making a presentation based on intelligence that she had received, and to, to besmirch her reputation, is outrageous. But when they go after the U.N. ambassador, apparently because they think she's an easy target, then they've got a problem with me. If they got a problem with me, I thought he was going to drop the mic and walk yeah. off like that moment right there. Well, I actually thought it was a great read re for um, Susan Rice. I don't know whether it was just floating her name in the first place with no intentions of nominating her, but I think that it has given the president energy and energized him to really consider it. I mean, there's no one can question her background and her record and her understanding of foreign policy and these type issues, she's definitely qualified. And the president, as I've said during the hearings of Justice Thomas, he has a right to appoint whatever justice is to the court and whomever he chooses to the Supreme Court, he, to the as Secretary of State. He is the president of the, of the United States. And I think you should defer and just trust his judgment. And I think Lindsey Graham and John McCain are totally out of line and even attacking her. I actually agree with the, the president. If you want to attack somebody, he made a nomination. She was doing his bidding. Attack the president. But also what's interesting is that Secretary of State Hillary Clinton was over the State Department, not Susan Rice. Uh, and it, I, I feel as if no one wants to bring up Secretary Clinton or even before he resigned, David Petraeus, because, frankly, they are uh, seen as so popular in, uh, in the nation's capital by on. both both sides of the yeah. aisle. And so they say, look, we don't, we're not going to attack Clinton, so we'll go after Rice because she went on television. But she wasn't the one who was over uh, the State Department. The State Department made the decision not to add security uh, there in Benghazi. It wasn't uh, Ambassador Rice. And so what do you think is at play here? Are they really trying to look at her as an easy target, target as a pinata? Yeah, I think they want to torpedo the nom nomination if they can. And we, I think with the intention of weakening this president who's coming off a strong election victory, anything they can do to sort of cast aspersions, create a cloud, I think they feel like it takes away a little bit of the president's leverage. And I think that's what they're going for. Because as Armstrong says, who is better qualified to be secretary of state right now in this country? Look at her resume. Look at her background. You know, NSC, you know, U.N. ambassador. So I think that's what it's about. I it's believe, about weakening I the believe president. this administration should put her name up for secretary of state, and they should welcome the fight. I think it's sent, I believe at the outset of a, of, of a second administration, you need to send a signal, we're not playing with you. We were real nice in the first four years. We held back Elizabeth Warren from Consumer Financial Protection Bureau because of Senator Mitch McConnell. You guys, so here's the deal. You want to swing? Let's swing. I think you start off with the fight. You're sending the right signal to the Republicans in the Senate and the House that we're playing for keeps in the second four years. Ambassador Rice's name happened to be the first one that came up that was available for assault right after a bruising election. So... If it weren't her name, just think who else's name might have come up and what would we be looking at here? Ambassador Rice obviously is up for the job. 
The president's made that clear. So what other line of demarcation can they draw? John Kerry's name surfaced. They didn't attack him. Senator John yeah. Kerry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he has come out. The president yeah. said, right, in the yeah. same news conference that you're referencing, that, that she's his person. Well, he does, in the news conference, he said he had made a decision. Right. Yeah, he yeah. made a decision, but if he chose to nominate her, he's going to nominate her. So I think that, that your point is, uh, Roland, is right on the money. But I also think that John McCain and uh, Lindsey Graham are up on a bit of a limb here because you don't hear very many other voices from the national security committees. Susan Collins has not been out. You do hear Kelly uh, uh, but, uh, but her, Aota, yeah. Aota, but hers was very much qualified. You know, you hear a lot of other Republicans who are on those committees who are in a decision to confirm her withholding judgment to a degree. They may say, well, there are some questions, but we're not going to block her out of hand. Marco Rubio said that. Uh, uh, a couple other people on those committees have said that. So they may be out on a bit of a limb. So I think if he wants to have a fight, uh, President Obama, that is, this is the one to have. It does this administration, you believe, uh, risk uh, having lots of air sucked out of discussion if this Benghazi discussion just continues and continues and continues. At some point, you've got to have a definitive conclusion to this. Otherwise, it can just go on and on. Well, there's so much we don't know. And there's so much they're not telling us. And until they bring closure with this, whether it's the Petraeus hearings or whatever, this, this water speaker is not going to stop leaking. Yeah, but it's, the, it's in the Republicans in Congress, it's in the, their best interest to keep it at a steady drip, as opposed to having a one-shot deal. Now but the president about controls committees. the drip. He, he can shut it down. But he's also but he saying, he but he also is saying, but he's also saying, you, ask, you want for information? Ask me, I'll give it to you. You want my people to testify? They will. Sometimes and that, you don't know what to ask for. Well, Think about sometimes the you, have to, you have to do some more research to find that out. And if you want a hearing, they can have a hearing. If they want to get answers conclusively and definitively, they can't. The think, about the, think about the patterns and habits of this town. These are permutations that we've witnessed after every two-term president was reelected between terms. You know, so this fits right into the pattern of behavior that has been the case since um, President Clinton was reelected in 1996. I, I just think, Michael, this administration should start off with having the most aggressive stance possible. Yeah. Aggressive on fiscal cliff, right. aggressive on nominations. Uh, we saw many of his nominations held up uh, mm -hmm. in the past four years, even when it came to the federal bench, other appointments. I just think, look, you took a lot of punches in the first four years. Right. To me, it's time for the president to throw some punches back. I, and I think he's on that course right now. I mean, I think he's learned from the first term. He tried to play ball. He tried to be accommodating. He wanted to forge some kind of bipartisan comedy in this town. He realized it's not going to happen. All right. So I think he's, he's ready to fight. And you, you see it with Rice and you'll see it with other things. Sonia Armstrong, Joe Michael, we appreciate it. I have a pocket square for you next time. All right. <laughs>